course, has been a hot topic all mm -hmm. week long. But one way to beat the heat is head to a local movie theater right. or stay home. AC is a great option. And here's <laughs> a, a couple of options for some highly recommended titles from our film critic, Dale Follow. That's right. So he's here this morning. Dale, good morning. Like the orange shirt as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually Thank kind you. of matches. Good morning, lady. Good morning. It matches sort of like the, the poster for Oppenheimer. So are you yeah. feeling Oppenheimer-ish? Is that a word? You got to yeah. tell us a little bit more of a review about this one. We did the Barbie part of uh, Barbieheimer. This <laughs> yeah. time we'll do the Heimer, okay. which is Oppenheimer. <laughs> and uh, actually, it's pretty remarkable that a three-hour movie is doing as well as it's doing. It's a big time commitment, but I think ultimately it's really worth it. Uh, this is a talky film until you get to the critical moment when the actual Trinity, the first nuclear bomb, is detonated in the desert of New Mexico, and it's a horrifying sequence. Other than that, the film doesn't get much from being in IMAX, you know, this large screen format, because it's a very talky movie. The talk is scientific, sometimes it's interesting, sometimes it's not so interesting. What really keeps the film going is a superlative cast led by Cillian Murphy in the title role of Robert Oppenheimer, the scientist who pulled everything together to create the atom bomb that effectively ended World War II. He's supported by Emily Blunt, who almost steals the film as his wife, Matt Damon as the general who gets the whole project going, and Robert Downey Jr. as the villain in the piece. And um, this is strong filmmaking, it's great acting, it's definitely why I gave it four popcorns. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an intellectual movie, given the amount of talk. And you know what the outcome is. You know they're going to create the bomb. So the suspense isn't really there. What is there is the compelling nature of all these characters who make you want to keep watching them. And that's where the superb performances really make this film a standout. You know, to be able to sit through three hours and mm -hmm. still want more, you know, to keep you around. I mean, that is really, really impressive. Yeah, it reminds me, we talked about a movie a few weeks ago, the Tom Cruise movie that came out. You said that one was super long, but it also didn't feel too long. This one kind of gives you the same same feeling, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I checked my watch a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> How far we were along in the three hour journey. But yeah, I wasn't bored, and okay. I was never tired of it. And the acting just keeps you going. Awesome. Yeah, and I was thinking too, you know, my husband wants to go see it, and he keeps asking me to see it on days that I've done the morning shift. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying, maybe when I'm a little bit more well-rested, <laughs> I can sit through that. Yes. I don't think I'm gonna appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Um, well, in IMAX, it's loud enough to keep you awake. Oh, okay, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. So you said four popcorns there? Mm -hmm. Four popcorns, my highest rating. Awesome. All right, so of course, uh, the AC in movie theaters is unbeatable during hot weekends like this. But if you're staying home, tell us about Alone on Netflix. Well, it'll cool you off because this takes place in the winter in Labrador, in an area of Canada that's very far north. And as usual with Alone, you have 10 um, participants who are all trying to stay the longest in the wilderness all by themselves. They're all dropped off in roughly the same area. And then it's just a competition of who's gonna survive to be the longest and win half a million dollars, which honestly doesn't feel like that big of a prize now, given inflation and everything else. And what these people undergo is really astonishing. I became a fan of this series a few years ago when it started on the History Channel. Now I'm an addict. It's actually the only reality TV show I really like mm. because it's the uh, individual against the elements. And it doesn't get more basic than that. And Alone has a really great way of having people film this themselves the suspense builds as people drop out one by one who's going to be the last one there i find this to be one of the most uh, dramatic and, and exciting series to watch because you're never sure who to bet on uh, people get lonely people begin to lose too much weight and starve and so i just find alone evokes all the emotions of a great dramatic series and it's real so uh, yeah. this is one of my favorite shows and I'm giving it four popcorns. It's not often wow. you have a rating for like a real, real reality <laughs> show, a real yeah. life series. Yeah. You have a good point, but I'm coming around. <laughs> I'm coming around. Well, I, I think this is fascinating because it's almost like naked and afraid in a sense, but they have less of the, obviously they don't have to have their clothes removed. Mm -hmm. Does that help them out a little bit in this series? I'm just curious. 
everybody's allowed to take 10 things in addition to their clothes and their sleeping bag and their tarp. So it's interesting to see what tools they take that prove to be useful and which ones prove to be useless. And it's what I love about this show. It's individual human ingenuity against the elements. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad you brought that up for us, Dale. Lastly, this morning, Stan Lee on Disney Plus. Stan Lee is the cre- was the creator of Marvel. He also lived to be 100 years old. So he literally watched the transformation of comic books into movies, into superheroes, into billions of dollars. He was there for the whole process. He became kind of a lovable icon of the Marvel series, but he was a sharp, commercially uh, driven artist who knew what he was doing. He knew what he was creating when he started the Marvel Universe. I don't think he ever imagined the cinematic equivalent of what he was doing in comic books. He was a comic book guy, and he had no pretensions above that. And that's what makes this documentary enjoyable. He's one of the least pretentious people in Hollywood that I have ever seen. And that's what makes him so much fun to talk to and to hear about and to see the development of his artistic canon is really interesting and it's nice to see a comic book artist be given a serious documentary film treatment you know this is very laudatory it seems there's a whole string of biopics lately that are basically controlled by the people who they're about this one isn't obviously because he's dead but um it it's typical that it's very, very positive. There's no negatives. You know, there are some negatives in everybody's life, but these documentaries pretty much ignore those and only stress the positive. And for that, he's an interesting character. He's had a huge impact. That's why I'm giving it four popcorns. Wow. You know, Christina, you're a big Marvel fan. Do you think you'll watch this? Oh, I'm certainly going to watch. I think that the Marvel Cinematic, they're my favorite movies out Mm -hmm. right now. If there's a Marvel movie that hits theaters, I go the first day if I can to go watch it before all the spoilers come out. But he's given us so many different actors able to be in their elements. Like we had Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther, obviously Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, my two favorite characters there in the universe. And then you also get the heartthrobs as well with Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans as Thor and Captain America. I told you she's a Marvel Marvel, girl. Love Marvel, could talk about it all day. Boy, I'm impressed. (laughs) That's that's definitely my wheelhouse. Just so as much as you know about Oppenheimer and all the other ones, I'll stick to my Marvel knowledge. Well, this is great for Mm -hmm. you and so many other fans out Mm -hmm. there to be able to see a, a documentary well done about this icon, you know. I think it's interesting too that it's I'm not creator. a huge Marvel fan, but I recognize Stan Lee because he did those cameos yes. in so many of the big movies. So as yes, soon as I you, saw that picture, you were waiting. Yeah, you were waiting in every film for the Stan Lee to pop up. Oh, that's, that's so yeah. cool. A four popcorn sweep wow. this yep. morning. Just wonderful. <laughs> it's rare, but it does happen. It does happen. <laughs> Dale, thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you next week. And for everyone at home, here are those titles again. Oppenheimer, Alone on Netflix, and Stanley on Disney+. Plus. And remember, you can always find more reviews by visiting dalempollock.com.